Anna Brown Ellers is a Tlingit weaver known for her chilkat robes. She joins us all the way from Genoa, Alaska. Please welcome Miss Anna Brown Ellers, who is joined by her daughter Marie and her friend Jackie. Thank you for being here and congratulations. I am glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> How did you learn this tradition? Well, first of all, it started out when I saw a Chilkat blanket, the graceful movements of the fringe when I was four years old. And right at four years old, I decided I wanted to make these as for my life, but I didn't tell anybody for 20 years. <laughs> wow. How old is this tradition? Uh, several hundred years old. It started out um, all across the Northwest and in Alaska as just uh, cedar bark, mm. plated cedar bark, you know, simple, very simple weave to keep the rain off. And at, at some t point, the um, cedar bark got smaller and um, thinner. And then at some point, yarn was added. And at another point, the design was added. Beautiful. And the design, or the can affiliation, it tells where you are from. And it tells your affiliation with the land, but not your ownership of the land, it's mm. your relationship to the land. I love that. Excellent. How long did it take you to learn this tradition? I apprenticed a year in the beginning, and it was pretty tough because um, Jenny Clanat was quite a stern teacher. <laughs> um, she was in 90 years old, and she would pinch my arm and like <laughs> kick me under the table <laughs> and she'd say everything in trinkets just like our parents did and I'd go around the house I'd turn add some wood to the fire and I'd get her some coffee and she'd say he and I'm, what do you mean she said water so <laughs> she just spoke Indian to me and my dad would translate the tapes when I got back to Juno. Oh. <laughs> wow. So I figured it out pretty fast. But you've been doing it ever since, right? You keep 35 years. Beautiful, wow. So tell us about what you're wearing. Uh, what I have on is called a Chilkat apron and in the center, the center face with the hands is a humanoid and it's mm. um, the woodworm humanoid as a protectorate of the, the um, woodworm people. And the bag is matching. Mm. This is the woodworm also. Beautiful. But um, the uh, aprons the we put on smoked moose hide and we add deer hooves at the bottom. Beautiful. Takes a while to age those out, dry them out. And our people used to use puffins in the old days, but puffins are protected by the federal government now. <laughs> so we found an alternative. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us about the hanging piece on the card. Um, this piece is a killer whale, which is... Um, commissioned by my mother for my dad. And it has eight yellow humanoid faces, which represented his eight children. Mm. And then when I was all done, my mom said, well, what about Nathan? <laughs> which is our older brother. He showed up later on in the program. <laughs> and and <laughs> So we got a sockeye um, ivory piece with abalone made out of a woolly mammoth, which could be up to 50,000 years old. Beautiful. 
beautiful, beautiful. And what is Marie wearing? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Marie's wearing the killer whale apron, um, tunic also, which my mom wanted to show him. Also, my mom ordered that for my dad, I think. Here's kind of bossy. <laughs> and um, <laughs> even though it took a, uh, four months to spin the wool and about nine months for me to weave it, after that, um, after we lost dad, mom wanted a killer whale bag to go with the mm. tunic and it's beaded on the back. Beautiful. Because mom's kind of the belle of the ball, usually. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that your daughter wears it now, or you could wear it. It's not gender specific, right? It's more about family lineage. Is that right? Yes, it, it's all about clan representation, and the clans are the, and the eagle and the raven in, in our tribe. And you marry the opposite clan if you're a raven you marry an eagle and it was a way of preventing intermarriage excellent so we have a video showing some of this process right can we look at that now okay we also use yellow cedar bark which we collect in the springtime and so we cure that in water after it's cured and most of the sap is out we use a knife and we cut it vertically and then split it with our hands till it's paper thin. And after it's paper thin, then we strip it like linguine and we can use that basically forever. Once it's all prepared, when we want to use it, we reconstitute it in water and split it by hand on our thigh to make the warp, which is the inner core fiber of the Chilcat blanket. Once that is all done, which can be several months later, I take the warp and hang it on a simple cross seam loom and then start finger twining. Once you start, you have to follow through to the end. Because it's not for you, it's for everybody else. The chill cat symbolism does is, is describe who you are and what tribe you are from, what clan you are from, and your affiliation with a certain region in the state of Alaska. Beautiful. <laughs> Who were the people in this video? Oh, the people in the video were Jacqueline Pata, my, my brother Nathan Jackson, who is also an NEA fellowship, and, and both of our clans, and e each of our clans is always in balance. The songs are a way of respecting the people on the other side, and when they sing and dance for us, it's the same show of respect and thanks. Mm, beautiful. Do you have a song for us? I do. My, um, first of all, I want to say that um, my dear friend and my childhood friend, my neighbor, taught me how to weave. Um, and so in part of this thank you and to honor her tonight, I'm going to sing a song that is a very powerful song, Ta'adeye Unatiga. It's a song that was composed by Auntie Yeti, comes from my village, and it is a song to honor um, Anna here tonight. It means Ta'adeye Unatiga, Apik Kuhas Ani, Akade Hatsagak Duak, Yeti Tagagi Dagayayak. And what it translates to mean is to say, on our grandfather's land, let's not forget, let our voices be heard. Our aunties, be sure of your feelings and pray for your raven.
Thank you, Anna Brown Ellis.